So in MRI machines, we need to know where the signal is coming from in the body. We need to localize it down to a slice or even a pixel, and we can do that by using gradient magnets. So in addition to the main magnet that produces the large magnetic field that is put through the body, there are other magnets in the MRI machine, and they're called gradient magnets. And the job of a gradient magnet is to change the strength of the, electron mag of the magnetic field across the length of the body, and the width of the body, and the height of the body. So it's done in three dimensions. So the magnets are there to smoothly increase the, the, the strength of the, the field B0 from the feet towards the head, for example. And the reason for doing this is because if we can make the magnetic field different, and because the angular frequency and the precession frequency both depend upon the strength of the magnetic field, we can change the frequency that the protons are processing at for different parts of the body. So the protons in the feet will be processing at a slightly different frequency to those towards the chest. And if we can target that, because it's a resonance effect with the radio waves, if we can target a particular slice of the body by putting radio waves into the body at a specific frequency that just that slice is processing at, we can just make those particular protons resonate and give us a signal. So here's a little diagram of that. Here's a patient. Now we have a large constant field here, and the field gradually increases. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger as we go through the body. That field is called the gradient field. So the total magnetic field is made up of the constant field, the, the B, B0 that we've been talking about, and the gradient field, which here is called delta B. And those add up to produce a, a magnetic field B, which is um, depends on the point in the body that, that we want to image. So the frequency of precession will now be gamma times B0 plus delta B divided by 2 pi. So the frequency will be um, that the protons that are processing at will depend on where in the body they are because the magnetic field strength is varying across the body. So when we apply a pulse of radiation, of radio waves, at a specific frequency f naught, which let's say f naught depends on the mag is where what is related to the magnetic field at this point in the body. Only the protons at this particular slice in the body will resonate, and only those will flip into the higher energy state and start processing in phase. These will not pick up the energy because they're not resonate. They're not being forced to. Um, process at the frequency which is their natural frequency. So they don't resonate, only these resonate. And that means that you will only get a signal from this particular part in the body. And in order to produce um, a signal, or, or rather an image of the whole body, you gradually change the precession frequency up the body and then you zap them with uh, radio energy at that particular frequency one slice at a time. And this is one of the reasons why an MRI scan takes so long you have to change the radio frequency every time you uh, want to image a slice. Okay, now it's even more sophisticated than that because the gradient field is in three dimensions. So there are magnets to control the field in the x direction and the y direction and the z direction. So it's a three dimensional image. Uh, and so you can, you can localize the signal in each of these three dimensions. And if you do that all at once, then you can get that localization down to a single pixel. And modern MRI machines can reduce the size of those pixels, pixels down to a res resolution less than half a cubic millimeter. So that's a very precise localization, which is why you get such detail in, in, in MRI images. OK, so the MRI scanner itself, let's just run through the parts of the scanner. Here's a little uh, cutaway diagram of it. Uh, this big Orange, these big orange lines are, are the cross sections of a big circular magnet. It's actually a, a superconducting electromagnet, which we'll look at in a minute. And that provides the main magnetic field. Inside those, down here, you can just about see the gradient coils, which provide the um, localization of the signal. And inside these are the radio frequency coils, which are the ones that both transmit and receive the radio frequency waves that are sent out by um, into the patient. The patient lies on a table which is um, inserted and retracted into the, the tunnel inside the MRI machine.
So here's a photograph of an MRI main magnet. It's a superconducting magnet. It's made of an exotic alloy. Um, and in order to make it superconducting, you need to cool it. And uh, you need to cool it down to f about 4.2 Kelvin. And when it reaches this temperature, you can push current through it with no electrical resistance at all, zero resistance. And so you can push huge amounts of current through it and the, and the coils won't get hot. The, these sorts of currents are needed in order to produce a field of 1 to 2 Tesla. So it's a very strong field produced by very large currents in a very, very cold machine, um, which, is, which is cooled by using uh, liquid helium. Here's a picture of a gradient magnet, which is inserted inside the main magnet. Um, the differences in the magnetic field actually aren't very large. We're talking about 10 to the minus 3, about a thousandth of the magnetic field strength overall. Uh, so very slight changes, but enough to make the protons resonate at different frequency and enough to make a difference in terms of the, the slices in the localization. So that's a gradient coil. Um, this is what an RF coil looks like. This is actually a head coil, which fits over a person's head in case they need to have a brain scan or something like that. So these are transceivers. They both transmit and receive the radio waves that are going into and coming out of the um, patient's body for the resonance effects. So that's what it looks like as a whole. There's a technician there and a patient ready to have a, a scan. In fact, you can see a head coil there by the look of it. Now the room in which the scanner is kept is a very special place. It needs to be isolated from all electromagnetic fields which might cause interference. Obviously radio waves are all around us and those would be picked up by the scanner as well. So you need to isolate it electrically, electromagnetically, uh, and also because of the large magnetic fields, you need to make sure that there are no metallic objects inside the room. And there are some great videos on YouTube of where things have gone wrong with MRI machines. You've got chairs and cleaning machines and things all stuck on the on the inside of the tube. So that's an MRI scanner. So why do we want to spend all this money and, and put patients through MRI scans? Okay, well one of the main advantages of MRI is that it doesn't use ionizing radiation like CT scanners use X-rays and so on and some nuclear medicine uses gamma rays. MRI just uses radio waves and magnetism. So no ionizing radiation at all. Um, there are no moving parts, so that's obviously an advantage. It's less likely to break. Um, it's completely painless, non-invasive, so the no nothing actually is injected or ingested. There is no breakage of the skin. It's completely, um, it, it's, a, it's a nice process apart from the noise and the claustrophobia, which some people don't like. As far as we know, there are no after effects from MRI scanning and it gives excellent soft tissue contrast, I mean really stunning images of, uh, of, of body systems. And one of the main advantages, and it's also an advantage of, of CT as well, is that um, it's computerized and the computer can, can switch planes, it can do fly-throughs of the body, it can image individual body systems. Uh, so it's very easy to manipulate just with a, um, a computer mouse. But there are some disadvantages, mainly for certain patients. Some patients aren't allowed to have MRI scans. Those with metallic surgical pins, um, heart, make, heart pacemakers, um, and anything like that. Some professions are barred from MRI scans as well, such as welders who may have little bits of metal inside their eyes or something that they don't know about, which the machine might dislodge. So if you've got a surgical pin, it can cause heating of the metal, which is obviously not very good news if it's inside you. Also, as I said, the, um, the room is, has, to, has to be kept very shielded and um, nothing, even you've got to even take your watch off before you go in there. And, you know, for some processes or for some situations, MRI isn't as good as some of the other, uh, the other processes that we can use. For example, if you want a bone scan, a structural bone scan, CT scan is much better because the attenuation of, of x-rays in bone is very good.